So ESPN has their current depth chart okay. for the Broncos. Mm-hmm. I want to play a little game. Here's who they have starting to start the season. Okay. Will that person still be starting by the end of the season? Okay. okay? All right. All right. I for like example, this. they have Jared Stidham as the starting quarterback right now. Okay. Will Jared Stidham be the starting quarterback by the end of the season? No. That's an easy one. That's that's no. gave you gave you the free layup there. All right. All right. ESPN has Cortland Sutton, Josh Reynolds, and Marvin Mims Jr. as the three starting receivers. They begin the year that way. Will it end that way? Mm. Who will be the three go to receivers by the time it's all said and done? Um, by the way, that Josh Reynolds signing kind of came in under the uh, radar. I think I think Josh I Reynolds that was a pretty good, pretty good signing. I think Josh Reynolds is a really good player. I do too. Now, you know, you know, you'll get tagged for you know, the drop in the NFC Championship game on. I think it was was it a fourth down drop that he had that yeah cost them a drive. Like yeah, he'll get, t- but I think he's a really good player. So I like Josh Reynolds. Um, but here are your other options. Okay, Sutton, Reynolds, and Mims is who they mm-hmm. say. You still have, you have Tim Patrick, right? You have Troy Franklin, Bose, mm-hmm. Bose, Bo, uh, and you got Brandon Johnson. Yeah, even a little Jordan Humphrey. So, no, I think by the time it's all said and done, who are your top three receivers? I think those are going to be the top three. I think throughout. Yeah, I think Troy Franklin is a guy that is going to take a little bit of time, um, and you know, right now he's I don't want to call him a one trick pony. But that dude can lift the top of coverage. Like he's a he's a burner, so he's going to have a role. That's how his role will start, and I don't think it'll develop a ton over the course of of the year. It will develop some, but that's the way I think they're going to use him early, and I think he'll remain kind of in that role. They have Javante Williams as the starting running back. Mm. Will Javante Williams be the starting running back by the end of the season? I'm going to say no. He'll be supplanted by who? Um, I'm going to say Audric Estime. Really? Yeah. I think, I think P Ryan's value is in coming off the bench and being kind of that all down everything guy, you know? And then I think Jaleel's a great little speed change up guy. So, but I'm telling you what, Estime is a guy that ran a really bad 40 this is where speed, like this is where underpants drills don't mean anything. Like I think we got a really good football player in what the fifth round. Mm-hmm. I think he was the fifth round pick. Like you watch him on film, that dude is a between the tackles beast who's got great contact balance and it's got some niftiness in traffic. And that dude had, I think he had more 15-yard-plus runs than any back in college football. He's just not breaking them for 60. That's okay. I'm going to stay with Javante. I think Javante is hearing all the talk. Okay. I think he's going to come out and run and play with a chip on his shoulder this year. And I do buy into the idea that you're always a lot better the year after Okay. You come back from all right. I like that. And ACL. I think I think Javante Williams is hearing all the noise. I think he's going to respond. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with Javante. Adam Troutman is listed as the starting tight end right now. Will he be the number one tight end by the time the season is over? I'm gonna say no. And I think who, it's gonna be Lucas Kroll. Not Greg Tulsich in those that wonderful hair and those tight tight hammies. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Piano strings for hamstrings. <laughs> No, I don't think it's going to be Dolchich. I think it's going to be Lucas Kroll. If healthy, it'll be Dolchich. But, geez, at this point. Why do you think it'll be Dolchich? Because I think he's a better player. Why do you think that? Because in the short amount of time that we've seen him play, even as a rookie, dude could play. Like, even could his he? even his rookie season, when he was out for a chunk of his rookie season... I remember when he started playing, we are all like, well, you know, he's probably missed too much time for him to really be able to make much of an impact. And yet he stepped right in and did make an impact. That rookie season, he played 10 games. Remember, he missed the first six. Mm-hmm. Then he played in 10. He had 33 catches for 411 yards and two touchdowns. 
despite it being his rookie season, despite him missing most of training camp, despite him missing the first six weeks, he still had 33 catches, 55 targets. If he's healthy, he's the best tight end by the end of the season. I disagree. All right. I think he might be the best pass catcher of the tight ends. Oh, my God. Here we go again. But he's not the best tight end. Oh, uh, unless he can block. He's got to be able to block, block, block. I need all my receivers to block. You too. You got so spoiled. Can you just admit you got spoiled by Ed McCaffrey and Rod Smith? Just admit you got spoiled. Nope. And just admit that those guys are outliers. Don't I have hate to Mike be. Shanahan. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm giving... I'm giving, I'm showing my reverence for Ed McCaffrey and Rod Smith by acknowledging how unique they are, and you need to lower your expectations. I'm they're, they're I, not those guys don't exist. I will, very few do. I will not lower my expectation. They don't exist because we, as a league collectively, don't make them exist. We allow them. We allow them. You're either coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. And we allow it to happen. Not on Sean's watch. Your tight ends are going to block. <laughs> Unless they're named Jimmy Graham. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you hot snot. Real quick, real quick. Alex Singleton and Cody Barton at inside linebacker. Are I like, they? Yeah, I like that. They're, they're they'll, there? they'll remain. Okay. Caden Stearns at safety. When it's all said wow. and done, is it Caden Stearns? Because you got that. You got that three. Headed uh, safety rotation there. You got Caden Stearns, you got uh, Brandon Jones, and you got PJ Lock. Yeah, no, I, th- I don't. I think Caden Stearns. He's had some injury issues, right? He's missed some time. I'm going to go PJ Lock at the end of the year and Brandon Jones. Okay. Why, Mike, are you such a Deion Sanders apologist? You've gone from swinging in Sean Payton's hammock to swinging in Deion's. <laughs> Well, thank you for creating that uh, image for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, actually, I, I would I would argue completely the opposite. I am very uh, and 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 ready to be very demanding and critical of Deion Sanders. You can't, and it's why I've heard some folks say, "Oh no, you know, seven and five, six and six would be, you know, a good next step for this program." No, that'd be a, that'd be a terrible disappointment. You cannot talk the talk like Deion Sanders has. You cannot trumpet the fact that you've brought in all these recruits. You can't talk about how Shador Sanders is a leading Heisman candidate, could be the first quarterback off the board in next spring's draft. You can't talk about Travis Hunter being a potential top five pick. You can't talk about all that and then go six and six or seven and five and finish 11th in the Big 12. You can't. Correct. And you're, it, you're in a yeah. You are in a position right now, and you've talked about hey, we went to the portal, we fixed our offensive line, we fixed our defensive line. That's what we struggled with last year. We got rid of the collegiate coach, and what was the guy's name Tim Lewis, the coordinator? Was that it? Was it Tim Lewis? Was it Sean Lewis? Sean Lewis. Yeah, there's so many Lewises. Um, but it, uh, you got rid of a college coordinator. You went back. You went to Pat Shermer because you like more pro style stuff. Blah 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 blah. You've done all these things. Well, it, I mean, the pressure is on. You won four games last year. You started off three and one. Now the I mean the pressure of the program is on, and you brought that pressure on yourself. And I believe Dion loves that. He loves that pressure. That's what he's all about. So, hey man, now like you've said, you got to win eight games. Yes, you got you got minimum. a minimum eight games. Minimum. You can't yeah. and you can't have all the talent. You know, oh, we got the best quarterback. We got we got two top five draft picks in Shadur and and Travis Hunter, as you mentioned. And you know we've got Shiloh. We, like, hey man, we we are loaded. We are talented. So okay, exactly. Deliver and and what if if you only go six and six or seven and five this year, and then you lose Shadur and you lose Hunter and. What I'm I'm supposed to go into yet another off season cycle with you, Dion, in which you're talking about oh, well, you should see the talent we got coming in. Oh man, it's going to be impressive. Right. Well, if if the idea is at some point you're going to be a national championship contender mm-hmm. and you're winning 10, 11, 12 games and competing in the college football playoff, right? Isn't this after all the talk? About this this upcoming season, isn't isn't this the year where you have to kind of start paying that off with 
Real wins? Yeah. Well, I, I would, you're going to go six and six and seven and five with everything we just laid out and what? The next offseason cycle, then we're supposed to believe that right. this is when you make the jump to 10, 11, or 12? No, no. You got to do it this year. I, I, and I think the other thing is, is this is, this is going to be a huge year in which you're going to judge Dion as a coach. Because we know from a marketing standpoint and a recruiting standpoint and an NIL standpoint, Dion is lapping the field in that stuff. But you can't amass some of the best talent in America all over the football field and claim that you fixed your lines of scrimmage now that were weak last year and come out and win. Five games, six games. Because ultimately, that is a scarlet letter on the coaching staff. Because you've got the talent, right? Don't you have, I mean, self proclaimed. So, so you, we're told. You've got more talent than just about anybody. So this is this is going to be a real live test on the coaches and your ability to coach these kids and and get victories. So to that, to that, ask us anything question. No, I'm not swinging from Dion's hammock. Barring catastrophic injuries, if this team doesn't go at least eight and four, it's mm-hmm. a failure. The yeah. season is a failure. Right. For for all the talk and all the hype, if you if you don't win at least eight games, the season's a failure. Okay. So hopefully that answers the question.